<laughs> Does something look a little different today? Just a little. There's a lot of no desks, that's right. I took all the desks and I shoved them to the side and we got some large, colorful letters. Some of you on previous day helped me make those letters and I greatly appreciate it. Today we're going to do an active learning strategy entitled Crossword Puzzles. And you're going to be required to spell out some words. We can do this at the beginning of a chapter. We can do it in the middle to energize you. We can do it at the end of a unit as a review. This active learning strategy really can be used at any time for any discipline. Well, let's start off by asking you a few basic questions. Oftentimes, students have to what while they learn? I'll give you a hint. It's a three-letter word. It starts with S, it ends with T, and it has an I in the middle. Do I have some, <laughs> do I have some volunteers who are willing to come up here and spell that out, please? Okay, come on up. So I want you to find the letters that go along with that. <laughs> Don't show us. And you think you're in the right order? Yeah. yeah. Flip. Are they right? Yeah. Let's give a little something on that. Now, if we as educators want you to learn more, then we need you to blank more. It is a five-letter word. It starts with S and it ends with Y. Do I have some volunteers? I think they can spell that out. All right, go ahead. You should grab a letter. See how you do. So now I'm going to give you a math term, and you have to spell out the word that goes along with it. Let's say this is one down. The board here is the top, the wall in the back is the bottom of the crossword puzzle. So I'm going to need five volunteers because it's a five letter word. And here's the definition. A diagram used to record information. A diagram used to record information. Do I have five people who want to try this? Me. All right, go ahead. Talk to each other before you do it, and then spell it out. First letter right up here on top. And students, they wrote a graph. Are they correct? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, they are correct. Give it up. Let's take a term from geography. And this one happens to be. 10 letters long. This is a big one. Instead of asking for volunteers, I'm taking the first 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 through Josh. Here is the definition. The physical features of a region. The detailed description of those features. Again, the physical features of a region. The detailed description of those features. Go ahead and talk to one another, please, and figure out what letters you're going to get. I 
All right, go ahead. Wherever you want. You can build off draft. Looking good. And the answer is topography. Give yourselves a little something on that. Let's use a science example. And if you want, you can build off the across or the down word. That's fine. Here's the definition. It's a term meaning water power. A term meaning water power. Now, who didn't get a chance to go last time? So I want you to make sure you're in here. And I'm going to pick three others right here on the end. All right? Go ahead. Okay, this R? Yeah. This one, all right. So we can just go across. So it starts with an H, Y, and a D. So we're going to put a W, and a P, and a W. It appears they're grabbing the right letters. Okay, so a D. How they do, students? Yeah. Hydropower is correct. Give it up. Yes. It is time for an ILA example. And I'm going to choose one, two, three, four, five. Here is your clue. She became famous after her death because of a diary she left behind. And you can build it off of any word that you want. She became famous after her death because of a diary she left behind. Go ahead. Talk to each other. Find the letters. Just the last name. I'm looking for just the last name. Just the last name? Oh, well, then we can do it. We're just doing her last name, right? Yes. Oh, correct. Okay. The next one is I'll give the end. Where is the end? Okay. Yeah, we're using this one. Okay. Are they correct? Yeah. Yeah. And Frank. Nice job. Let's give a little something on that. Well done. As with all active learning strategies, versatility makes all the difference. Let us say you had a list of vocabulary words, names, important places, or events that you wanted your students to know and understand. As they walk into the room, they would notice large, colorful letters leaning against the walls. I am positive more than one of your students would immediately ask, what's up with all the letters? When I'm asked this question, I usually respond by saying, you will soon see, please be patient. But, I will fully admit, I love the enthusiasm. With this strategy, I'm able to provide individual students, small or large cooperative groups, with complete definitions, partial definitions, synonyms, antonyms, or any type of clue that I believe will challenge my students to ponder the correct word. Use this strategy after 10 minutes of quiet review. They will eagerly want to study their terms because of the excitement associated with this strategy. Crossword puzzles will help get your students energized and working interdependently.
Again, versatility makes all the difference. To that point, my colleague Gwen will demonstrate this strategy while reviewing Spanish terms. Animales con las letras en frente de la clase. Por ejemplo, vamos a empezar con un animal. La primera letra es P. El, anim or el animal vive en el agua, en la laguna. Dice en español, quack, quack. Ok, la primera letra es P. Chuy, busca la letra P. ¿Quién sabe la segunda letra? ¿Quién sabe la segunda letra? ¿Qué okay, es? Excelente. La tercera letra. Andrea, recuerden estudiantes, el animal dice cuac cuac y vive en el bosque. Excelente. Hay una letra más, ¿verdad? ¿Quién sabe la letra? Ok. La última letra. ¿Eso es clase? ¿Es la respuesta correcta? Sí, sí. La palabra es pato. Cecilia tiene razón. ¿La respuesta es correcta? Sí. Sí, sí es la verdad. Con la palabra pato necesitamos el artículo detenido en frente de la palabra pato. Necesitamos el, la, los o las en frente de pato. Ah. El pato. Excelente. Muy bien. Clase, el pato, el animal, vive en, la, en el bosque, a veces en la granja, pero no mucho. ¿De qué colores es el, es el pato? Amarillo. Amarillo, ¿otros colores? Verde. Café. Verde. Verde, excelente. El hombre es el pato, uh, la mujer es la pata, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, sí. Excelente, muy bien. Y el pato y la pata dicen... Quack, quack, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Excelente. Bonito. Vive en la granja. ¿Es el color café o negro? Dice he en español, pero dice ne en inglés. Oh, let's see. Déjame ver. ¿Es un animal que vive en los campos? También y en la granja o la finca. Necesito un voluntario. ¿Quién sabe escribir el animal en frente de la clase? ¿Quién puede escribir el animal en frente de la clase? Ángela. Okay. Muchas gracias, Ángela. Eres una buena estudiante. Gracias por su participación. ¿Y la letra, Ángela? A la C. Excelente. A. B. A. 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 Oh. Classic? ¿Es el animal correcto? Sí. Sí, sí excelente. Muy bien. Clase aplauda. Excelente. Sí. The crossword puzzle strategy has no limits. Students will love working alone, in small or large cooperative groups, studying and analyzing a variety of clues as they excitedly spell vocabulary words, names, events, places, and so much more across your classroom floor. If I were teaching integrated language arts, I might ask my students to list the parts of speech. Students could then break it down even further and list several types of nouns, such as common, proper, and abstract. Cooperative groups could be timed as they spell out a series of words. This strategy could be taken into the hallway or any space that allows students to freely move about. Smaller letters could be used as students race against one another to determine which cooperative group 
can write the most words in the least amount of time. Again, the possibilities are limitless. Please note, you can use the assembly line strategy to generate all of your letters. Reluctant students are still placed in cooperative groups. It is my sincere hope they will learn something as they listen to other students discuss the clues and the possible answers. I gently approach the groups, lowering myself to the level of each student so as to seem less authoritarian. Then, I kindly encourage reluctant students to at least offer their ideas and insights, even if they choose not to lay the letters on the floor. Do something. This is another common theme I share with my students on a regular basis. It began one year when I was at a conference and a few of my students decided to treat my substitute teacher with less than complete respect, shall we say. Upon my return, several other students knew I would be disappointed. They decided to let me know before I entered the room that they were not to blame. They repeatedly told me, quote, we didn't do anything, Mr. Whitman. We didn't do it. We didn't do anything. I asked them to take a seat and I told them I would address the entire class momentarily. I knew I would have specific consequences for the students directly involved, but I also knew I had to address those that sat idly by and did nothing. I collected my thoughts, entered my room, the hour began, and essentially I said something like this. Please, do not tell me, as if it is a badge of honor, that you did nothing because you should have. If you are in a situation and you see something that you know is wrong, address it. Do something. It might be as simple as asking the student to stop. Ask them why they are being disrespectful. Or at least offer to help the substitute teacher. If you can't muster the courage to do any of those things, remember, much of what we say is nonverbal. Fold your arms in front of you. Nod your head in disapproval and keep your eyes focused on the teacher each time a student does something inappropriate. If you and your classmates at least do this, the disrespectful student won't feel so empowered.
or not, do you feel you're right? Yes. 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 You think there's an I in here somewhere? There is. There is. You are absolutely correct. Yeah.